Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I am talking about the gambling fallacy. The, this one's actually an interesting one because uh, I have master's degrees in psychology and statistics and it kind of butts up against both of them. Okay, so the gambling fallacy is classically thought of as a uh, roulette wheel. So in a roulette wheel, you have the red and black and there's, there's number complexity to it, but I'm not going to focus on that. And the wheel spun and the ball lands on either black or red. And people will bet on whether or not it will land on the color black or red. And you have to bet on numbers, but whatever. Um, so in, in this situation, let's say the ball landed on red three times. Many people would say, oh, it landed on red three times, it, it must, it's overdue to land on black. And that is the gambling fallacy. The idea that the, the, that independent events are overdue to happen, or independent events are more or less likely to happen based on previous events. The, the probability of the ball landing on black or red each time is independent of the old, it's the last time. So, if we consider it a 50-50 chance each time, in which we could, the probability of black three times is 0.5 to the third power times the probability of red, which would be 0.5. So that's 0 0.5 to the fourth power. And the probability of black all four times is the exact same probability. There is no difference in probability between those two outcomes. But it's really easy to get into this pattern recognizing behavior where we find patterns in uh, processes that don't exist. And we believe that previous events affect future events. So, a gambling fallacy occurs when someone belie believes that if a particular event happens frequently over a period, it is less likely to occur in the future, or vice versa. So, head several times, and just like I said, someone might think that a tail is due to occur. But if you flip in a coin, the coin doesn't care what happened all 1,000 times before her. It, the only thing it cares about is the deterministic, you know, its current state and the, the strength of the flip and... and you can turn it into a physics problem, but the point is, to us, it might as well be random. It, it's about 50-50 heads and tails. And it is wrong to assume that if you have it head three times, it will be tail. And the problem really is that we want we find patterns in everything. That's what we're made to do, and it can be good in you know predicting rainfall, the monsoons, and natural phenomenon that really isn't independent. It is cyclical. But when it is independent, we have a hard time separating that. Because we find patterns. And, and social psychology would perhaps explain that as a schema, stereotype, and other not necessarily good behavior. But we find patterns, and it can cause, it can cause us to believe things that aren't really true. It can it can cause us to find patterns that don't exist because the process really is random. And that that that's to say nothing about like electronic games when they can program complex defense right into it. 
those that they're, they're certainly not random. They are made to beat you. They're made to exploit your psychological biases and your beliefs about you know recognizing patterns. They know you recognize patterns and they'll use that against you. Okay, so game release valid me. If event if one event isn't a precursor to another event, being an independent, it's wrong to assume patterns in the event. Because the probability of in the subsequent event, the, the next uh, ball landing on red, will always be 0.5. It is never not 0.5 unless you're seeding in some way or the house is seeding in some way. Okay, so that's the end of the video. Thank you for watching.